Alrighty, welcome everyone. I'm Tiabu, and I am here on Monday for Retro Monday Overdrive, the finale of Sengoku Kitan Yotoden. The Yotoden. Um, the story of three magical destined blades and their heroic destined heroes who are, uh, destined a lot to destiny a lot, uh, and fight Oda Nobunaga, who is destined to get probably killed by Ranmaru, who seems a little bit too interested in power. Um... Show's been fun so far. It's been it's been enjoyable. Kind of not the most incredible thing that I've ever seen, but it's also had some moments that have spiked into into pretty cool territory. So overall, I've been having a lot of fun with it, and it's been a been a good time. It's been a good watch. Um, reasonably acceptable time frame anime for its style and stuff. Um, also you know plenty of blood and gore and cool monsters and weird villains and. Strange dragon beasts with a woman inside that shoot lasers everywhere blah, and explode, and I'm into all of that. All those parts are good. Um, uh, dragon. I drew a dragon. I don't know why. I, actually, I do know why it's, um, Dio. Yeah, 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 killing the dragon. Uh, this one. Uh, from that, that one. From Ronnie James Dio. You can, you can, you can see the resemblance. There's some resemblance there. Yeah, I actually... Huh. Hey, pretty happy about that. Um, big monsters. I hope that there's another cool monster in this one. We've had two for two on cool monsters. We had the multi-headed Hydra thing that exploded, um, cause, cause our main character exploded it. We had the horrifying monstrosity made of the woman that, that guy, I don't even know. Um, uh, uh, complete exact copy of the same girl, just a different name, Kayo instead of Kiko or whatever. And she also got exploded and it was a really cool explosion. So hopefully, <laughs> hopefully we meet another young lady who just gets exploded because they turn into a giant monster. Um, that would be a, a good three piece hat trick for the finale of Yotoden. I don't know if we're gonna actually finalize anything in this. Are we gonna defeat Oda Nobunaga? Are we just gonna are we gonna figure out what the destiny of these swords thing is? Are we gonna are our characters gonna survive this? What the fuck is going on? We're in the finale of like a it's like an hour and a half plus of of media that we've gotten here that's been built up and set up, and all of these villages are on this this march to try to fight Oda Nobunaga and his demonic forces and all of their evilness. And there are quite a number of uh, other admiral general type of folks all around all over the place. And our sword-wielding red-haired boy has gone off on his own after a person who he was kind of the mentor of, I guess, um, gets killed. And I think he gets sort of hurt by that psychologically, but it's kind of unclear. Um, and then our halberd wielder and our knife-wielding main character are still together, hanging out, killing demon zombie monster things. Good. I don't know where this story is going. It's, um, um, uh, let me, let me try to put it in, uh, uh, in useful terms, it is, uh, nonsense. It's nonsense. It doesn't make any sense. It doesn't go in any directions that make any sense. It's very and then e with the storytelling, not because this, then that. It's more like, and then this happened. Um, it sort of jumps around a lot. We've gone to these different villages. I think we're probably going to go to a third village. We'll see if there's anything that rhymes. I, I don't know what to expect from this. And that's, that's storytelling, and it's not the best that I've ever seen. But it is still pretty cool, and the animation is made up for it in a lot of ways, so I don't really care. Let's watch episode 3 of Sengoku Kitan Yotoden and see if by putting a nice bow on it, see if we can wrap this story in a way that leaves it feeling really good uh, as a memory, because you've got an opportunity when you finish off a story to really, like, say the last piece and make it you know, oomphy and, and, and pow and make it feel like a thing and, and sort of wrap it all together in a way that even when all the little pieces didn't necessarily line up and while the watching experience was going, the audience might have been like, what is happening here and why are those crow demons appearing? You can still make it wrap in a compelling way and totally change the experience, and I'm kind of hopeful that that will happen because at present it's sitting at like a five or six, and that's not great. And if if it has a compelling ending, then that could pop it up to a seven or eight. So that's sort of where we're leading. So like five six range on one side. I'm just putting a little diagram so I, f I remember to talk about this at the end, and then seven eight range on the other side, and a big question mark in the middle. Um, it could go worse. It could go better. It could stay right where it is. But I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful. There are a lot of good pieces 
in in Yotoden, and I just want a little more glue. I just want them a little more smushed together in a way that makes them feel like they they are compelling and, and work together really nicely. One of the ways that we could do that would be with the weird monk character who's appeared a couple of times. He's been sort of a tie through through the rest of the thing, and if we reveal that really it's sort of like his story and he's manipulating everything and we bring that to some kind of compelling conclusion, that could be really fun. Um, there are a lot of things that could be done. I, I expect that I will not be able to expect what the show actually does. So we'll have to watch it and find out. So let's watch it and find out. So I've got episode three of Yotoden up and ready to go. Zero seconds, two versions, picture in picture in the description timer on YouTube. BB Power to Catch Down. Let's go! Also, if you've got recommendations for other things, put them in the description because I need more things for Overdrive. Thank you. Beep beep timer. The Comet. A black demon god reemerged from the depths. The Sengoku era. Put a stop to the malevolent star. Onoji Temple. Connects the one with the nun? The two great gods shining in the darkness. When the king of the malevolent star's domain is coronated, the seal between the mundane and benign. Blah, 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 blah. It's a lot of prophecy. And they will beckon the end of the world. Cool. That horse looks great, by the way. Three weapons! Three faded. Mm. Master your skills. Become aware of your sword's purpose. Gather under the blue shining light. Except for that one guy who he's off doing his own thing now. Holy shit! We're right at final battle stuff? What the fuck? Did we just kill Nobunaga? In the first seconds? No, it's a fake. It's a fake. It's gotta be. Right? Well? Huh? I don't get it! <laughs> no! Ooh, into the flaming eye. Okay, that was, that was a pretty fun, the flames of anger chapter. Okay. That was, that was a pretty fun intro. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, be careful. Oh. Uh, that visiting lord of the Oda clan, huh? Uh, we've gotten real deep into the history now. <laughs> Whoa! Feels like I'm reading lineages.
My father is possessed. So this is the uh, son of Nobunaga, the visiting lord of the Yoda clan. What a great voice. Mosoraku? Okay, so it is your father. Cool. Okay. Oh, that, that comet sure is splitting the heavens still. Ooh. Oh, okay. Oh, hi there. Oh, oh, look, it's got a little baby mouth. Ah. Oh, it's all the, all the good monsters. Oh, good. Yeah. Mm. Truly a demon castle. I love it. I actually love that. Can we, do we attack it? Can we attack it? <laughs> mm -hmm. A true demon god. Uh oh. Do you think you might be the bad guy? No? What you thinking, Ron Maru? Thinking about betraying your lord? Yeah, you're thinking about betraying your lord. And then, in a totally different place, a different thing happens. Ooh, that lizard looked great! Hello. Oh. He's seeking something. We'll need all three blades. My guy, my guy, Enlight your enlightenment is worth the world? And all of them will fail, because you're not there. It's destiny! Oh, hi, lizard. So we put it, we put it all on him, huh? Because of, because of what happened? Caused the, hmm. To, maybe to prevent the rise of a, What about preventing the rise of a great evil? Is that not worthwhile? Hmm. Okay, more meditation toward enlightenment. Killed Nobunaga.
Hmm. Hmm. Somebody cutting off their communications? Ho! Someone like you? Yeah, I, I would agree. I don't want demons ruling everything. But why the phrasing sacrificed to the emperor? I don't know. Maybe I need a better grounding in the history to understand this. I don't know. All right, where are we heading out? Ozzy's oh, Castle Town. Need all three blades. This is a weird transition. Are we in memory? Nope. Yes, this is memory. Right, you, and him, and you. But he rejects his destiny. Knowing, knowing its existence, knowing of it. It depends. Hmm... Uh Oh! I didn't expect we'd be going this direction at all! Whoa! He wants to reject destiny for personal- Whoa! Interesting! That's way more interesting than- Oh! Oh my god! Just a drifter, straightforward. Not living for fate, not living for death. What is it you are fighting for? Destiny, a family that's already dead? A village that's been destroyed? A world that you don't care about? For what do you fight? Oh, it's suddenly super interesting. Holy shit, I didn't expect some actual ideas here. There's an actual idea there, wow! Wow! What do you know? Yeah, it's just, just bleh. What? Really? Uh huh, uh huh, uh huh, and it didn't work. Huh. Start zoning out. <sighs> huh. 
That's not the Woody. That's not what it is at all. And there's the impatience and the need to go off on their own and try. Multiple attempts. Wow, that got so much more interesting. Finally, it's personal. Finally, there's a, like, it's human. It's not just, oh, look, a cute girl. Oh, she's a monster. Oh, look, a cute girl. Oh, she's a monster. Something interesting with character. A rejection of de- a, an active rejection of destiny. Not just like a- not just a, a refusal of the call to adventure, but a post- post call to adventure active refusal of destiny itself. That's in, in favor of personal- personal satisfaction and potentially love. Ah! God damn it. Are they more insectoid every time we see them? They feel like they're more insectoid. That's some cool ninja shit. Oh. <laughs> okay, that's some even cooler ninja shit than I thought it was. Oh, uh, what is that on the back of the neck? There's like a little spider thing there. Oh, one of the generals. Hi. Ikanimo. My name is Bowie. David Bowie. <laughs> Just contact juggling. Mission's over. Get out of here. Get out. Get out. Oh, come. <laughs> Spiders. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> hmm. It smells like ninjas. I feel like I saw this. This is Kimetsu, right? This is Demon Slayer? Ooh. Spiders? Spiders! Sweet. I can now use the Sword of Sorcery. Wow! Is that Sakon? Nani mono da kisama wa. Huh. I'm pretty sure that's Sakon, right? Like who else? Yeah. What? How did you how do you know? I'm wearing a mask. You <laughs> you shouldn't know that. What? No, 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 not me. Yeah, okay. Let's go Sakon. Why did he sh why did he show up? Come on, man. You just had a really good speech about not wanting to do this for particular reasons, and you come anyway? Got him. Very thematically interesting, but why? Looks pretty shiny to me. I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, hi! <laughs> Oh, let's go, dude. Just casually climbing a sheer wall. Ninja shit. Damn. That's a lot of murder. Demons. You know, demons. Oh, my God. Oh, no. Oh, no. Don't trust that.
Yeah, be ready to murder that child. Sorry. Sorry, child. I hope if you're normal, then I don't want to murder you, but be prepared. Because that might be a demon. Oh! What? I don't get it at all. Okay. Zombies? They keep getting up. I don't like that. I think there's a better way to indicate a spinning blade. Okay. Use the superpower. Hello, small child. Can you really kill a thing that looks like a child? Oh! You should have you should have done it. No hesitation, man. Holy shit. <laughs> Damn. Damn! Yeah, that fucking sucks, man. But, yeah. But if you swing on the child before you know 100% that it's a demon, then that makes you the bad gay. Oh. Ah, eclipse stuff. Oh. This is all according to plan, my guy. <sighs> Are you not ready for what is to come? Oh! A true demon lord is birthed! The rise of a new member of the God Hand! Ha! No! That's gonna be a hell of a fight. Oh no! Nice! Gotta love bullshit ninja backflip stuff. What are we up against, man? Who snuck a rocket into the castle? Uh-oh. Kill him while he's gloating! Kill him while he's gloating! Okay, what? Oh, that's what we're dealing with? That's Nobunaga? Does, is he wearing a hat or something that indicates who he is? Holy shit. I like the smoke. It's really cool. And the beads shatter and fall apart. Your duty is complete? Was that Ron Morrow who said that? Oh! What? He was a- what? Oh my god! <gasps> well, that's rad! Just getting tossed around by King Kong and shooting lightning lasers at him. Yeah, I'm, I'm into it. Let's go. Shit. Bye.
that's tragic. Oh. Power of the blade. Yeah, Big Nani, I don't know, man. Wow! Same animator as some of the, the Warp Into Nothings cuts. That was awesome. All right, let's fight the big thing. Wow, that's so big. And finally, the music is landing, too. It's really, it's really landing, okay. We got 20 minutes left of, like, pure finale fighting. I'm into it. Yeah, all right. By our powers combined. That was really cool. Very scaly. One sword? Always with the jumping and the leaping. Ooh. 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 The real villain reveals himself. Ooh. <laughs> Okay, sky is still split by the giant light. How's Sakon? Is he alive? Can we save the red-haired boy? We can. Kind of, maybe. Did we do it, guys? That felt very climactic and final. Well, you're alive. I don't know. Oh. Oh, shit. And now my the whole ritual is complete and I can transcend. I am much more than that. Okay. Ah. Uh, ah, uh, that guy. The trickster. Trixie bitch. So what does that make you, Ron Maru? What did you do to defeat the demon god of the darkness in order to what? Uh oh. It's a greater plan, and he's gone. So, what's the actual plan, man? What? What? 
What are you? No, it seems like a normal thing. Why? An alien god. Oh. Oh. What does that have to do with the Oboro ninjas that we just killed? Yokubo, okay. A time of turbulent wars. Setting up, setting up civil distress for, uh, theological reasons. Weird. So Ranmar has been running it the whole time. That was well set up. In order to create all the negative energy and channel it into the blades. Okay. Focal points. All to fuck with you. So, maybe we could overcome this with love? Sakon? That's bad. All right, let's fuck this guy's plans up. All right, all right. Man, his plan seems pretty airtight. He seems pretty, pretty victorious. You followed the fate that was set up. Where does that fate come from? He's not. Oh, but the real power, real power of human emotion? Does nothing because it's his power. Fuck. Empty. Oh! And it backfires. Doubly shit. All for naught, huh? Maximum tragedy. Oh. Oh. Hi, Sakon. Don't take that hit for her. Sakon! God, fuck! Keep fighting. Oh, buddy. Oh, buddy. Oh, that's rad. Oh, that's rad. Haven't seen shit like that since Avatar The Last Airbender. That's so- that's so cool. That's so fucking cool. <laughs> people- people never use, like, psychokinesis effectively, and that's the best way to use it. Yeah. Oh. Rad. Let's go. The power of love. Fuck you, man. 
Can we get a third? He's only injured, as far as I know. Yeah, I keep looking down on me. I still, I mean, I'm into it, but I don't know if there's a way out of here. Let's go. Money? We need a hat trick. We need one more. Come on. He's still alive, I think. It's destiny. Come on. It's fate. Come on. Even if it's bullshit fate, we can forge our own. Some bullshit. Fucking pocket, magic pocket sand. Incoming. Halberd! Now's the time! Oh! What? Now's the time! I didn't expect it to be that way, but let's go, dude! Yeah! Boko da Masaka! I don't know, man. That's- that's some weird... Some- some weirdness, I don't know. Let's go, Ryoma. All of your people get to pass through and join us. Ah, uh, they're coming. Ah, uh, it's coming. Hmm, fun. Hmm, fun. <laughs> yeah! Yeah, fuck you, man! <laughs> Yeah, use the only opportunity you've got. Uh, just throw him at it. Is that what he's doing? Is he diving in? Three blades. Boom. Nice. You too. Oh, shit. Oh, holy shit. That's cool. Infinite monster. Yeah, infinite monster. <sighs> it seems like it kind of did it. Uh, that was really cool. Very Canada style. Oh! Oh! Ah, uh, he's gonna die, dude. Yeah, we gotta hit you with one more tragedy. Ah, fuck. We got him, buddy. We got him, buddy. <laughs> yeah.
That's the blood loss. Yeah, we're not gonna fuck with it. He's gonna actually die? Let's go. I'm sorry for being happy about a sad thing. I, I really am. But man, the number of times that I've seen endings like this full pull their punches and just be like, Yeah, you know what? He's revived by magic juice. Fucked up. I much prefer this. It's very straightforward. Sacrifices are made. Real tragedies occur. Let's go. Yeah, I think you have become a big beneficiary, my guy. Could be. Your. Yeah, your father's an idiot who got tricked into becoming a demon. Oops. Oh, I'm gonna steal so much of this. Hmm, but why did he do it? People who have been forgotten. Mm -hmm. Yes, this very real, very accurate story of historical drama that explains everything. Indeed. It was all an alien demon who sold some swords and a bad myth to a couple of tribes of ninjas. All right, here we are, hundreds of years later. Oh shit, it's gonna come back! The, the, the comet's gonna come back! No, the comet's not going to come back. That would be a cool idea, though. Set up for 500 years later. In, like, a cyberpunk future world, the demons start to reemerge. Now there's, now there's a, a thing that I could get behind. Human civilization moves on, but the demons remain in waiting. I feel like I should skip this. We've got three minutes of slow sideways credit rolls. We're going to skip. Sorry, I hope there's nothing else spectacular at the end here, but that feels like a final finale, and so... Pa-pow. Let's check and see if there's anything special here. Nope, it's just five minutes of pure credit rolls, and we'll just take that as is. Excellent! Hey, you know, I said some things at the beginning about wondering if maybe we could do something really interesting and compelling here at the end that would make it feel better to me, and I think we might have actually swung it. First half of the episode kind of is all over the place still. It's jumping around, it's moving from place to place in a way that eh, it doesn't feel totally locked together or compelling. It's also, uh, a lot of it is like specific events and uh, machinations politically between characters that we don't really know that well and don't understand their machinations very well. At least I don't. Maybe, again, if I had a better, more solid grounding of the actual Warring States period history interactions between all these individuals, and the, I would recognize their names at least, and be like, oh, that's that guy. He, he's famous for blah, 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 blah. Um, but I don't have that, because I don't know nothing about nothing. And so I'm left with what the anime gives us, and it's not that much. Um, now, to, to be clear, I'm not sure if I would argue that I'd want better fleshed out historical drama between these characters. I don't necessarily care. I feel like I maybe want none of that. I maybe, I maybe I just want to ignore all that and just focus on the story that we're telling, right? I, I don't need the broad scale. I, I know that Oda Nobunaga is trying to take over the world, and he's a fool, and Ranmaru is the one who's fooling him, right? 
I just need to know Ayanosuke's plans, Sakon's plans, and Ryoma's plans. I just need to know the main character's ideas and the the interesting tricks. That said, I don't mind it that much. It just ends up, you know, it ends up sort of sort of flowing poorly. Um, it just doesn't fl- doesn't flow super duper mega omega omega well. This stuff is pretty interesting. Rejection of his fate. He's seen some bad shit. Some people he's cared about have died seemingly for no reason. He's being forced by this destiny thing to fight for something that he's not sure about. So he sits in a cave and he meditates for a while. As this guy, I forget his name. I forget his name. Um, tries to convince him otherwise. I... I like this, even if it's moderately thin, even if it's like, I don't know if I want to follow my destiny and sort of edgy in some ways. I still like it. I still think it's cool. Characters at least having the micro wherewithal to question their place in a story and be like, hold on. Am I doing something stupid? Am I doing something that I don't actually want to do? Am I on the right track? It humanizes them. I think that humanizes characters. I think it does a really good job of humanizing characters. Characters go along following their narrative path. Human beings go along uncertain of what the fuck they're doing on the day-to-day basis and whether what they're doing is aligned with their overall purpose, and also if they have an overall purpose, and also is there a point to this whole life thing, and also why do I exist? That's more of a human experience, much more realistic to my real-world real, real world experience of, like, waking up every day and being like, huh, why am I here? What the fuck is existence? Why am I conscious of it? Why am I not, like bugs that seem to just go about doing their thing not caring about whether the thing that they're doing is like ethically justified why do i have to give a shit about all this stuff weird why am i a creature that's self-aware strange is there a why behind any of those questions maybe is it even worth exploring is it worth living i don't know it's like seriously (laughs) these are the questions that rack most of us often like all the time like, all the time, we get destroyed by these questions. We try not to think about them most of the time, because it's really hard to go and gather food and, you know, work and, like, uh, uh, feed yourself and keep surviving and find a partner and decide to have kids, maybe. It's really hard to do any of that if you question the fundamental reality that you're a part of. But we are capable of questioning it, and we do, often. So characters who are just like oh i guess i'm part of a destiny thing and i'm just gonna go do this quest because that's what i'm here to do sort of feel like fictional characters and they are and that's why they act that way so when you add another layer to that and you have those fictional characters be like hey wait a second why am i doing what i'm doing makes me relate to them a little bit makes me understand them a little bit makes me go oh that's a person because it's a recognizably persony thing to do beyond just being a sapient like uh, uh, caricature of a sapient creature, an actual sapient, sentient, thoughtful, conscious creature will question their being and the reasons that they're doing stuff and all the stuff that seems to be unquestionable and obvious. They'll question that shit. And so Sakon questions that shit, and I quite like it. I quite like it. Okay, this gets us into some of the more weirdly stuff that I just don't know about. I really like this scene. So I want to stop at a couple of scenes through this episode. This scene where we get some, like, bright colors and some blue, the the awnings and on some of the, the buildings wave in the wind, there's a dog barking and there's stuff moving around, and I, uh, there's, uh, the wind in a second, hold on. Here, yeah, Whew. right here, we, we pan by, light music, Whew. stuff is moving, the castle up on high, everything's empty. This is cool. I like this. It's evocative. It feels filmic. It feels cinematographically correct. It feels setting establishing y. It sets the scene. It it's good. It's cool. It's interesting. It raises questions. It makes me feel like I'm in a part of a place. Um I experience the wind going by as part of the whoosh. I experience the dog barking in the background, and then we see the dog, you know. Uh, seeking food as we do, we experience the awning going by, we experience the the light rays and the the glow of the sun. It feels like daytime, it feels like it's a time and a place and a real real thing. Um, And that's sort of few and far between in this weird fantasy anime, because this is a weird historical fantasy anime, and a lot of the stuff we see is like explosions and day for night and, and weird ninja battles and everything's on fire and everything's chaotic and crazy and not real. Not real. Very dramatized. Very, very weird. This one scene feels grounded and down-to-earth and real. 
as our characters look out at this landscape and decide what they're going to do, it feels grounded and real. And then we cut from there to um, a flashback that's not very well established as being a flashback, but is fucking fascinating. We lay out the fate and Sakon rejects it. And again, I mean, I, it's the same idea as we, I, I kind of went in on some of the ideas that he presents here in the last time that we saw him. Because they're interesting ideas, and they're the best ideas. That's right, this is our fate, this is the way that things are. But this isn't a theory. We have to we have to take this seriously, man. If we don't take this seriously, everybody's gonna die, self-included. And that's gonna go terribly and poorly. I inherited the sword, I was the sole survivor. If there's no purpose for any of this, then, well, well, well there must be. There, there must be a purpose for some of this. So, is it only natural that you live for vengeance? Is there not, perhaps, something else you might live for? And with those words unspoken, he goes in and kisses her, and she does reciprocate for a moment for coming to something like her senses and pushing him away. You losing your mind? Not at all. So what do we live for? Fate? Death? Vengeance? What about life? What about being? What about, be what, ex what about existence? What are we fighting for? What is our purpose here? She leaves without a word. Ryoan, that's the, the dude's name. Ah, I've been acting so strangely every time. But every time I mention Sakon's name, you get quiet. Why? Well, he's frightened of failure. That's not it at all, man. That's not it at all. We can't rely on him. We'll have to go and fight on our own. Right. But you wish you wish you could rely on him, right? You really wish you could rely on him? That would be very nice. And indeed, in some ways, it turns out that you can. Okay, some fun ninja shit. Oh, they do get spiderier every time. Mega tornado powers. Super duper backflips. David Bowie of Doom. And some more ninja shit. I, look, it, it just becomes a bunch of fun ninja fighting, and I'm down. The whole chunk here that's all just fun ninja fighting, it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. Um, Sakon showing up, each of our characters popping in for, for you know, for their own sequence and their own battle is pretty cool. I don't know if there's anything super compelling about this one, but it is spooky and creepy, and that's good. And finally... More historical drama, uh, and, and predictions and premonitions -y stuff. I think I'm going to step back and say that over the first two episodes, I think the show did a good job of setting up... Is it Ryoma? I think it's Ryoma. Uh, no, Ryoma's the good guy. Is it, um, shit, uh, bad guy. Uh, uh, <laughs> totally forgot his name. Ron Maru. Setting up Ron Maru as a maybe villain. Like, you're not totally sure. He might just be a, like, a sneaky fucker in Oda Nobunaga's group who's trying to, like, stab Oda Nobunaga in the back and become Demon Lord himself. That was sort of the theory that I was running on. It's like, maybe he, he indicated before that he had some, like, extra knowledge. And so I was thinking maybe he actually knows what the ritual is and Nobunaga doesn't. And so he's leading Oda Nobunaga along so that eventually come the moment of, of ritualistic whatever, he can step into the role and take on all the great powers of being the Demon Lord and stuff. But this is far more compelling. He, it, it is far more compelling. I don't fully understand it, and that's okay with me. He's an alien from another... He's from the, the, the rock itself. He's from the star itself or something like that. And he wants to create a portal to the underworld, I think, because it'll let his brethren through. And somehow our underworld is the star, and that matches. That's pretty cool. Having a, an unsuspecting character behind the scenes playing, pulling the strings in order to set up a figurehead who then can be the, the hate sink for the main characters and be the person who gets destroyed, I think that's a cool narrative trick, and it's one that I think I'm going to steal because I've got a thing going on in my D&D campaign right now that is, it has to do with a ritual that a couple of characters are very squeaky vehicle uh, a couple of characters performing a big ritual for purposes and 
I like the idea that something going wrong with the ritual leads it to go in a totally different direction. Or even that they've been lied to about the nature of the ritual. That they're not correct about what they're trying to accomplish. And that their goals maybe maybe are like forgivably sinister and comprehensibly so. In the same way that Oda Nobunaga is like, well, it makes sense. He's trying to take over the world, whatnot. It's not utterly evil, necessarily. It's not, I want to release infinite demons into the world, right? It's, I just want to take over the world and rule it because I'm uh, an authoritarian and I, I, I want power. Okay. In my case, the characters who are doing this ritual are doing it nominally to save their children. But what if they're wrong about the nature of the ritual that they're performing and that its purpose is actually something grander and more sinister? Maybe they've been led in that direction by an unsuspecting underling or something like that, or an unsuspected underling. Something like that could be really interesting. Because then you get a really straightforward set of villains for the characters to be like, grr, grr, we hate them, we're going to fight them and you know, deal with the moral struggle and whatnot. And behind the scenes, there's something really sinister going on, like really dark. And they might not ever even figure it out, but having it in my back pocket as like, a layer beyond a layer, a villain beyond a villain, a secondary antagonist beyond the antagonist. That's a cool idea that I might just steal from Yoto Den. All right. Ronmar is very happy. Go and cut off Oda Nobunaga's head. This guy, being a trickster, being an actual a member of Oboro, he's praying away and bam! Blasted and revealed to be a full demon himself. Why? Why? All to trick them. All to trick the three swords of sorcery into being there. That's cool. I feel like there's somewhere else that I'm... I don't know where. Like, ancient history setting you up to be the hero, but really your heroic journey is leading into the... playing into the... Uh, directly into the hands of the villain. Hmm. Uh, it's something. Something like that. I don't know. Anyway, it's it's cool. And... Giant demon. Um, it's really cool. I think it's I think it's so cool that we get this mega Godzilla monster and it barely matters. Like it it barely matters. And the scenes of it are awesome, super cool spectacle and scale. Crazy laser lightning beams getting whipped around by this giant monster, and it's all happening in the far distant background as like a a, a backdrop thing. We pull all the way out from there. <laughs> These cuts are really cool. The strobe effect is really cool. I, it's sort of sad that we don't get to see the whole monster, but that's part of the point. That's part of why it feels so good to me, is that we don't get to see the whole monster. We just get to see pieces of it, and that actually adds to its scale. Laser beams from multiple directions, and... An awesome explosion, really lovely smoke stuff, again, spiraling around... For the third time, Ayame gets blasted back by a big explosion. We all get to lay around going, huh, <gasps> I think we did it. But really, it is the youthful, exuberant Ranmaru who is ready to get his shit going and get his plan underway. Uh, the actual battle with Ranmaru is good and scary. He's nonplussed throughout the whole thing, just totally seems to think that the main characters are just irrelevant to him. They're a snap away from defeat. He can just he can just deal with them at any point. And of course, that arrogance is what leads to his downfall as he's not looking behind him and gets speared by your halberd wearer at exactly the right moment. Exactly the moment that we were waiting for. Giving us just enough time to, via a full, powerful self-sacrifice, put the darkness away. And save the world to some real extent. That's pretty great. That's pretty cool. 2530 scale. What did I why did I write that down? That's why I wrote that down. So this stuff is fun. The faraway shots. I, I like these. They feel monster movie-ish. But this scene where we whip Ayame around inside the hand of the thing, we sort of pan up its arm a little bit, does a really great job of indicating a sense of bigness of scale to me uh, uh of size and motion and sweeping past the camera this yeah yeah it feels like there's just limitless arm to go past 
Wow. Wow. Woof. Woof. Huck. Chuck Ayame was straight up in the sky. That feels really cool. That feels really cool. The faraway shots are really cool too. Big explosions are really, really rad. There's a scene a little bit earlier where the the dude with the the spider dude um, gets eviscerated and his whole face wow, warps into nothingness and that was really cool too. And there's a scene where the the big darkness explodes. Um, I think it's our final explosion. Where there's a there's a really nice impact frame set and uh, oh yeah. Oh, yeah, I want to see that again. Okay, so it flicker, 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 flicker. Ba, 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 Pow. Bam. Bam. Same one. Bam. To whiteness. Okay, and then a little yellow red. Oh, yeah. Pow. Whoosh. And let's see it again at full speed. I, this is that Kanada style loopy circles. <laughs> Jeez, that does something to my brain. How do I... How do I chunk back slower? Like that, okay. Oh, that's really cool. It's like it, it burns into my... Uh, 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 you know how when you look at a bright light, it burns into your eyes? And then the next frames layer on top of that burn in to create a sense that they're all happening at once. It's kind of a neat phenomenon. Yeah. 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 And I think the last thing that I'll talk about is that our victory is not um is not without loss. We talk about that a little bit at the end in the 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 fade out. Lots of these people whose lives and histories have been lost in the flow of time. But I gotta say I I quite like this. I know I'm reminded of, um, to bring it back to D&D &D in a way, I just saw the D&D &D movie. I, this might spoil a little bit of it for you, but I'm not trying to. Um, if you want to just quit out now, I'm not going to talk too much more about the show, so peace. But I'm going to say something that I think is relevant to modern day storytelling versus stuff that goes on here. I've seen a lot of films and shows recently that seemed to me to pull their punches at the end. Like, I'm used to shows not killing characters off because they think they can bring back the show. Bring back the characters, make more of a thing. But it seems to me that there's been a move toward a lack of finality and real stakes in a lot of storytelling media. We don't want our characters to die. Where? But we actually do. We want our stories to have some finality and some reality and some stakes to them. And it always feels contrived and empty when a contrived and empty reason pops up to just, yeah, we'll just rescue that character. Yeah, that sacrifice won't really matter. And in the D&D movie, there's a character who makes a self-sacrifice and just gets, uh, there's just no, there's nothing to it. Just, just right back. Gone, right back. It's hardly even a spoiler because it happens so fast in the film. It's like, ooh, there's the big self-sacrifice that we're waiting for at the end of the film, and it's over. And it's and it didn't have any real stakes to it. it felt kind of empty. And you can argue that because there's some fiddly bits about that particular film. But let's zoom out from there and talk about it as a broad thing that I think happens relatively often in stories. I like my stories to have characters who die. Not because I'm a cruel motherfucker who wants to see dead characters. That's not what's going on here. Finality. It makes the narrative that came before feel more real. Feel more, feel more compelling. Our characters lose something. They lose one of them. We lose something. We lose one of the characters who presumably we've grown to care about over the course of the episodes, over the course of the show. Now, maybe you don't care about Sokon. Fine. Still, I think it's better this way, that we lose one of them, that the stakes are real, that it doesn't feel like our fictional characters are destined to be on some kind of a heroic fate, and that the world and the narrative will conspire to make that fate come true. 
Sakon questions the nature of that fate itself when he goes off to the cave and he wonders, am I really fighting for something bigger? And it turns out, no, he's fighting for the machinations of a person. Now, uh, uh, Ranmaru might be an alien god or whatever, but he's still a person. It's still an individual's thoughts and individual's goals, just like all the other soldiers who've died in the Warring States period. So, am I destined to fight and die for the reasons for somebody else's dreams and missions? Is that what I want? That questioning of destiny is like, well, the destiny is for us three swordsmen to work together and we'll fight off the enemy and we'll all survive the thing and we'll go on to live happy lives and, and whatever because that's what we're here to do and that's our destiny. And that it doesn't play out that way, that the story isn't perfect, that it ends up being flawed and human in some sense, makes it much more real to me, makes it much more correct to me. Now, it's it's just as perfect in some sense because we lose our, our romantic interest and all this possibility and all these – it's genuinely tragic and there's this real possibility of, of potential future love between this character and IMA and uh, he, he tries to get at and reveal um, her truth as a woman or something like that and all of that could be very compelling and good. And so it's sad. It's It's a genuine loss. There's something actually – that falls apart and doesn't go the way that we might in an idealized, narrative, faded, destiny sort of situation we might want. And so I think, I think it, it echoes his arguments against fate, against this idea of destiny and this purpose thing. And it, it rhymes with that in some sense. And I think that's good. I think that's good fucking storytelling and maybe the best piece of storytelling over the course of the whole series. All of these elements have happened as according to fate. And then the character who rejects fate has himself rejected by fate, kind of. He doesn't get to be the heroic wielder of one of the swords who lives on and whatnot. He gets dead. He gets to contribute to saving the world, and that's pretty heroic and pretty cool. But he does end up sacrificing himself, living and dying for that purpose. Ends up following his fate by his own decision in order to... Like, against the fate for the girl, and then dies for it. Against the fate for the, for the story. Something about that is compelling to me. Much, much more compelling, and much more final, and much more interesting to me than, we can get you to a doctor, and we wake up three months later, and he's like, oh, I'm in a room, and there's an unfamiliar ceiling, and I, I'm saved. Much better this way. Real loss, real sacrifice. Real intrigue. Weird demons. All in all, I think this ending does swing me higher on Sengoku Kitan Yotoden. Um, so we were talking about the 5 to 6 range and the potential for moving up to a 7 range. I, I'll, I'll call it a 7. It's a generous 7. I, I don't think it's like a hard, solid, strong 7. It's certainly not closing in on an 8. It's a low 7. But there are some elements of this story and the animation and the flow of the thing that I thought were a little bit better than just mediocre average. Is it the greatest thing I've ever seen? No. Am I going to remember it in a few weeks? Yeah, maybe. Yeah, maybe. Would I if Sakon didn't die here? If we didn't get some intrigue here at the end? Probably not. It would all probably blend into my back background of all these other shows that I've seen and become sort of muddled with um with with other other shows as is this narrative for the ending these characterizations for the ending they've made it stand out just a, just a wee bit as a little bit more than a monster of the episode sort of 40 minute throwaway OVA with sort of mediocre pacing it actually i think nails some things down in the ending that i thought were really fun so way to improve now what? Now what the, what the heck do I watch next week? I don't know yet. That's that's the truth and the true fact. I don't know what I'm going to watch next. I've got a few things downloaded, but give me more suggestions for old OVAs and interesting things that you might want to see on this part of the series, uh, this part of the channel, and I'll think about it and decide on something to download and watch come next week on Retro Monday Overdrive. An old show made new once more. See you next week for more. Peace.